It seems it's going to be a pretty hot one today and I don't really want to be working in this garage on a really hot day. It's already quite hot in the, in the morning now and it's only going to get worse from now on in. So I did have a plan for the day but that's just gone straight out the window and I'm just going to do whatever the hell I can be bothered doing and then I'm calling it a day. So to begin with, I'm going to take this thing out of the clamps and I'm going to get the second one into the clamps because I didn't get both of them glued up last night. It got a little bit late. So hopefully everything goes as well as yesterday's glue up. No dramas, no problem, and it all worked. Let's see how we go this time. Already fired, I lost my sticks. Oh, there they are. Firstly, I need to get all of these dowels lined up and just, just, just almost in the holes. I don't have time to move the camera, I'm sorry. Oh, this is taking me too long. There we go, gotcha. So I just want to check corner to corner and make sure it's square. 8.59. Now yeah, I call that 8.58 and a half. Good enough, I ain't going to mess with it. Gap free joinery. Would you expect anything less? So I'd like to fit these to the legs now, but because the other one's in the clamps and I want to do both of these panels together, I'm going to put this panel inside and then I'll start working on the front and back panels. I've got my rails here, but it seems I've forgotten to machine up another rail for the top back rail. <laughs> After smoothing out the backs of these rails plus machining up a few other components there, I've gone inside to take a break because it was too bloody hot. The wind has just turned, now it's a southerly wind and the wind's quite strong so you're going to hear that roller door rattle and clunk and do all sorts of things as, it, as the wind passes by. I apologise that for that, I can't control it. See, rattling away there. So using my cheat sheet of numbers, I've gone through and marked all of these points, which represent the left hand side dowel of the slats. There's going to be a dowel here and a dowel here, so that's the left hand side dowel. This is a 20mm slat. I want to put the dowels dead centre of these slats, so I want it 10mm in. These slats aren't going to sit flush on the back edge, they're going to be set in 3.5mm. So I need my 10mm plus 3.5mm. 
and that'll be where the location of the first dowel goes. So I'll set my handy dandy marking gauge to 13 and a half mil. See, 13 and a half. And then on these lines, I don't want to scribe all the way across because this is all visible area here and I don't want to put a scribe mark in there. So just on the lines, Then I'll get myself a bread all. Once again, somebody's gone and stolen my stuff again. The bloody gremlins that work in my garage each night, they move everything that I own. Little buggers. And they don't give me their pot of gold. So now I just want to put a bread all point, bread all point, on where these two lines intersect. So now I've got my left hand hole here. I need to locate the right hand hole though. So I need to know the spacing between this hole and that hole. So my dowel spacing is 21 millimeters. I don't know why it's 21 millimeters, but that's just what I've drawn in my drawing. So 21 mil it is. It really should have been 20 mil or 18 mil. 20 mil, we can live with that. It leaves half, uh, nine and a half mil either side. So that's fine, that's what three, three, eight, so three eighths of an inch. So, now I need to use my marking gauge, which is already set, and put a scribe line over here somewhere. But I don't want to go too far, because the slat's only going to be here. I don't want to be putting scratch marks in the middle of nowhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly measure out 10 mil. About that. I'll put that 10 mil mark on my mark here, and just make a mark here. So that's the X... That's the right hand extremity of my slat. So I can do anything I like inside this area, I just can't do anything I like in that area. I know it's a kind of awkward way of doing everything, but it's seven o'clock at e it's seven o'clock in the evening. I've got plenty of time. I can do this for the next ten hours for all I care. Alright, so now, we're, now I know where my slat's going to go roughly. I'll get my marking gauge and extend this marking gauge line across over here somewhere. Just short of those lines, so I don't want to go past it. So now I know the left hand location of the dowel, and I know that the right hand location dowel is in and out that way. I just need to know how far away that is. So if I get my vernier caliper, turn him on, Set it to 21 mil, which is the dowel spacing that I want. Oh yeah, perfect is always nice. So, 21 mil, and then if I can get, hopefully that's in focus, I can't really see. If I put one point into the hole that I've already got, and I use this to make a new hole, I can use that outside edge as being the point that I want to put my brad hole in to make the proper hole for drilling. As, as demonstrated right here. I want to get here, put one point in that hole, and I don't want to just press here or over here, I want to make sure that I'm pressing inside my score mark. So there's a mark there, I can only just barely see it. So using the brad hole to the right hand side, or is it the left hand side up there? Uh, it's the left hand side for you guys um, put it in the scribe line and on the left hand side of this hole so now I have two marks 21 mil apart 13 and a half mil in perfect I'll just go through and do them to the rest So I realise that might seem like a very backwards way of doing a basic joint like a dowel. However, if you look on the forums and on YouTube and just anywhere online or even in books, you'll, you'll see comments quite often saying, oh dowels, they're very hard to line up, it's hard to locate them all and blah 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 blah. That's because they're trying to take shortcuts, that's because they're trying to screw around doing all this stupid stuff, whereas all they actually need to do Get yourself a tape measure, get yourself a vernier caliper, whatever, and measure the things out. It's like colouring in a colouring book. If you can't colour within the lines, you've got no hope in the real world. 
So, with that rant done, I can now transfer these marks to the other pieces, making sure that I keep all the orientation of these boards the same. So, this is the front lower rail, this is the back lower rail. That's the front of it, that's the back of it. That's how they'll sit in the piece. So I'm referencing always to the, the, the left hand side of the screen there. So the left hand side of the screen, right hand side of the screen. I think it's the right hand side of the screen. I don't know, it does my heading. So anyway, I'll, I'll transfer those marks over to there and then I'll get the top rails and do the same thing. With the top rails because they're thinner, with the top rails because they're thinner, I'm going to have to jack them up just so they'll get a level or somewhere close to level on the top surface here. While it's all done, I've got a match set, front top rail, front lower rail, back top rail, back lower rail. They're good. They're done. I'm done. It's hot. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't already subscribed, thank you for considering it. If you gave me a thumbs up, thank you very much. If you gave me a thumbs down, why? And something else. Oh, if you've shared this video somewhere awesome, thanks very much. Hopefully you don't cop any flack for it.